Hello again and welcome to the bigger picture. We're at part three for Daniel 8. And before before we begin, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for your grace and mercy. I humbly ask, Lord, that you will cleanse me now, that I will be a mouthpiece for you. Be with the listeners and sanctify us through thy truth, O Lord. I humbly ask in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so we're still on Daniel 8, and our focus text remains the same. It is Daniel 8, verse 14. And he said unto me, Unto 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. Now this verse gives a time when the cleansing of the sanctuary will start in 2,300 days. We already established that the cleansing of the sanctuary happens only on the Day of Atonement. But the question must be asked is if we should take the 2,300 days as literal days. Well, because the Day of Atonement is one of the feasts, that is where we can start to find out. It says in Leviticus 23 verse 4, These are the feasts of the Lord, even holy convocations, which ye shall proclaim in their seasons. Now these feasts were given by God and they had their particular season. You had four convocations in the spring and you had three convocations in the autumn. Seven in all and they were lined out in order between the spring to autumn um, seasons. You had the Passover, the Unleavened Bread, Wave Sheaf, Pentecost, and Feast of Trumpets, Day of Atonement, and Feast of Tabernacles. And if you want to read about that rundown, you can go to Leviticus 23. But you had the Passover, Unleavened Bread, Wave Sheaf, and Pentecost in the spring season. And then you had the Feast of Trumpets, Day of Atonement, and Feast of Tabernacles in the autumn, right? Now, each represented in symbol an event or events that would happen according to the same order. The feast in symbol represented what would be in reality. The symbol is called the type and the reality is called the anti-type. For example, the Passover being the first of the seasons or festivals or feasts in the springtime was when Israel would sacrifice a Passover lamb. This would be the type. And this represented the sacrificial death of Christ, which we would call the anti-type. I hope that's clear. So you had the Passover lamb, which Israel would celebrate and kill the Passover lamb. And that was called the type. And the anti-type was Christ being the Passover lamb when he was crucified. And you have Matthew 26 verse 2 to... Um, as evidence, ye know that after two days is the feast of the Passover and the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. So that's when type meant anti-type. Now question, which kingdom out of the four mentioned in Daniel was ruling when Christ was crucified? So remember there were four kingdoms that we keep hearing about when we're reading the book of Daniel. Daniel, which one out of those four was ruling when Christ was crucified? It was the fourth kingdom, right? Rome. And because the Passover is the first feast out of the seven, that means then the other six feasts would follow after at some later period and not before, right? Daniel was given the 2,300 prophecy under which kingdom? Under Babylonian empire or Babylonian rule. There's around 500 years between the Babylonian empire and the Roman empire. And 500 years has 180,000 days in it. Well, it, if it is that the 2,300 prophecy is literal days, then God was wrong when he gave the various feasts in their order. The Day of Atonement is the sixth feast. Christ, as the Passover lamb, died in 31 AD. And remember, the Passover is the first feast. But as you can clearly work out, if the 2,300 prophecy is literal days before the sanctuary can be cleansed in anti-type, then the Day of Atonement should have happened way before 31 AD because 2,300 days is only around six years, not even close to 500 years. And so if the feasts in type and anti-type go in order and Christ died in 31 AD, 
which is nearly 500 years from the time Daniel got the vision, then 2,300 days came way before then, right? Which could not be true, which means that from that standpoint, it couldn't be literal days. Now, some other people might say, okay, um, the prophecy isn't dealing with the anti-type, it's dealing with the type. And so it is 2,300 literal days before the Jews would be able to observe the Day of Atonement. Because at the time when the prophecy was given to Daniel, Israel was still in captivity. Well, as, as we said before, 2,300 days is about six years. Remember that Jerusalem with its temple built by Solomon had been completely destroyed by Babylon. And Israel would need a sanctuary or a temple to observe the Day of Atonement, right? Because there are certain things that you needed the sanctuary to observe the feast. It was not built again, so the temple for the Jews was not built again until the Medes and Persian Empire. So question, are there 2,300 literal days or around six years between Daniel chapter 8 vision and the rebuilding of the temple in Jerusalem? Let's find out. In Ezra 6 verse 14 to 15 it says, And the elders of the Jews built, and they prospered through the prophesying of Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the son of Edo. And they built and finished it according to the commandment of God of Israel and according to the commandment of Cyrus and Darius and Axerxes, king of Persia. Verse 15, And this house was finished on the third day of the month Adar, which was in the sixth year of of the reign of Darius the king. <clears throat> so the temple was finished in the six year reign of King Darius the Persian, and there are around six years that makes up the 2,300 literal days, right? But Darius the Persian king wasn't the first king of Persia that ruled over God's people. Cyrus was. So from Daniel getting the vision during the Babylonian rule under Belshazzar, to Darius the Persian king, that passes the 2,300 literal days. And there were actually two previous kings before him. You had Cyrus and another Darius who was from the Midian side of the empire. So therefore, if the temple was built in the sixth year of Darius the Persian king, you could say, okay, so it took 2,300 days until, he, until the temple was built. But if you take into account that he wasn't the first king he was the third king that means you've already passed the 2300 days which is around six years and so therefore whether dealing with the type or the anti-type the 2300 could not have been literal days so then what is it does Daniel chapter 8 give us some clarification in regard to what 2,300 days really mean? Well, Daniel was given the vision and we read about it from verse 2 of chapter 8 to 14. But from verse 19 to 26, Gabriel the angel then gives him the interpretation of the vision. And in interpreting verse 14, this is what the angel says in Daniel 8 verse 26. And the vision of the evening and the morning which was told is true. Wherefore, shut thou up the vision, for it shall be for many days. Question. What does the evening and morning represent? Well, quickly we think of Genesis. Genesis 1 verse 5. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. And then as you go down through the chapter 1 of Genesis, the evening and morning was the second day, the evening and the morning was the third day, and so on. So an evening and morning represents one day. If the text had said in Daniel 8 verse 26, evenings and mornings, the plural, we would know that it is more than one day, right? So the question then follows in Daniel 8 verse 26, which particular singular day is the interpretation talking about in relation to the vision? Hmm? Well, it has to be the day of cleansing and the day of cleansing is the day of atonement. Think about it. The interpretation that Gabriel gives Daniel is that the evening and morning vision is true. 
but that's only speaking of one day if it's singular evening and morning so what one day is gabriel referring to he is referring to the cleansing day and the only day that the sanctuary was cleansed was on the day of atonement and when did the day of atonement happen leviticus 23 verse 27 says also on the 10th day of the seventh month there shall be a day of atonement and in Hebrews 9 verse 7, it says, but into the second went the high priest alone once every year. So on the day of atonement, the high priest would go into the most holy place one time. How many times for the year? One time for the year. Gabriel tells Daniel that the vision of that day, the day of atonement is true. So when we return to verse 14 with the interpretation in mind, when we read unto 2300 days the question is really what do each of those 2300 days represent each one of those 2300 days would represent according to the interpretation a day of atonement 2300 days of atonements and how many times a year did the day of atonement happen one time a year therefore if it happens once a year and there are 2300 of them how many years should pass to go through all of them 2300 years i hope that was clear and by the end of those days of atonement in type we would reach to the day of atonement in anti-type just as the Passover in type met the anti-type when Christ, the Passover lamb, was sacrificed. So I hope that is clear. That when you look at Daniel 8, it gives you the understanding of why the 2,300 days is not literal days. Because the interpretation only speaks of one day. And therefore only speaks of one day. We have to identify what that day is. And that day has to be the day of cleansing because... That's what the text says, unto 2,300 days, and then the sanctuary shall be cleansed. The sanctuary is only cleansed on one day, and that is the day of atonement. And so when you read the text, unto 2,300 days, then the days that is spoken of is 2,300 days of atonement. I hope that is clear. And if it is not clear, please um, write a comment in the comment box below. And then after we've worked that out, we then have the second witness of Numbers 14, verse 34, which says, After the number of days in which we you search the land, even 40 days each day for a year. And then you have Ezekiel 4, verse 6. <clears throat> and when thou hast accomplished them, lie again on thy right side, and thou shalt bear the iniquity of the house of Judah 40 days. I have appointed thee each day for a year, which is speaking prophetically, right? So, and because it's speaking of years and not days, the 2300 days now we understand why daniel's response was this in daniel 8 verse 27 it says and i daniel fainted and was sick certain days afterward i rose up and did the king's business and i was astonished at the vision but none understood it but understanding that the 2300 days is speaking of 2300 days of atonements which is 2300 years begs more questions for example why would it take so long for the antitypical day of atonement to be started and when does does this 2300 years start the more we ask is the more we have to dig so what picture do you see forming from Daniel 8 verse 14.